In addition to the insecurity in Nigeria, we're currently facing another scourge of men in uniform. Yes, men of the Nigerian Customs Service have been accused of extrajudicial killings in towns of Ogun state borders. However, the Controller General of Nigeria Customs Service, Colonel Amid Ali, retired, has failed to appear before the House of Representatives, who are in the process of probing this claim. And the lawmakers are not happy about this. A member of the Ogun State House of Assembly, Sikirat Ajibola, representing Idiroko and Ipokia State constituency, had petitioned the federal parliament over the alleged legal activities by men of the NCS. Now, joining me once again, I still have in the studio um, Mr. Dotun Alaribibe. Alaribibe, I hope I got it right this time. He's a political analyst, and Noble Obasi is a legal practitioner. Thank you, gentlemen, for staying with us. I, I'm going to start with you, Noble. I, I don't know what the law says concerning the customs and where is their position of um, operation and should they be a, in, involved in extrajudicial killings? I mean, of course they can, they can carry out arrests, can they? Yes. But where should they draw the line, especially if a person who's been killed is not necessarily a drug baron or a kidnapper who's taking someone across the border? Okay, so for the Nigerian custom, extrajudicial killing is not one of is not um, any of their responsibilities. Their responsibilities is just to check uh, imports into the country mm -hmm. to make sure our borders are safe. So for them going on a frolic of their own and killing innocent citizens, it's 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 an, it's, it's an extrajudicial killing and it's punishable because they are going ultra very their power. It's not within their power to do that. You know, as a matter of fact, it's not even within their power to threaten, to threaten citizens. Mm -hmm. It is their power to make sure that the goods coming into Nigeria are safe and sound for, you know, for whatever purpose it, it is meant for. I know that in, the, in recent times, in fact, between 2018 and 2019, there has been three intercepted gun or ammunition mm -hmm. coming into yeah. the country. Well, recently also, it was uncovered that a certain governor had a stash in his home. Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering when that investigation is going to start, you know, but let's leave that aside. The customs, yes, gives us, makes a lot of money for Nigeria every year. But who oversees the customs officers who are on duty? Is there somebody who does that job? Well, as far as I can recollect... Because we know the police has a police service commission and then the army has it. But I don't know which other commission has an oversight function over the customs service. I don't know. Okay. I don't know if they have an oversight okay. committee uh, or whatever. You know? so, mm. so, if I might chip in, so the uh, customs will fall under the Ministry of Interior. Okay. Yes. So, but then, but then again, they have um, a, control, a controller general in the person of uh, uh, Colonel Ahmed Ali retired, and so he should be, uh, you know, he should be the person coordinating the, you know, the activities of the Nigerian custom. You know, Are they he, really coordinating the activities? Because if we're beginning to have issues such as this, this is an allegation so. which needs to be investigated. Yes, and just, just so we know, Ahmed Ali um, has had several times where he's been called to face either the upper oh, house or the lower house yeah. and he failed to show up. And there was a time that he was asked to come in the customs uniform and he failed to wear it because he said he doesn't work with the customs, he's just heading the customs. With all of this, you know, in the mix, can we really say the customs can be running amok, being that even its head cannot be called to order? <laughs> so that is Nigeria for you, see? Like I say, we are practicing civil rule, not democracy. You see, because a lot of people disagree with you, but go ahead. Yeah, you see, there's there's no respect for rule of law. You see, um, a committee in the House of Rep is calling Amid Ali to come. You know, he's never going to show up till Kingdom comes. We have the precedence now. Even the speaker called the military top brass. They didn't show up now. The only reason Amid Ali will show up there is if President Buhari directs him to so do. Otherwise, forget it. But what happens to the balance of 
separation of powers. Every arm of government has its roles and responsibilities. Even if you are, as we know, uh, are appointed by someone in the executive, you still are answerable to the judiciary and the National Assembly, which is the leg legislature. But that seems to be a bit shaky under the Buhari administration, even in the, the past four years. I'm wondering what could have been the foundation for that. It's not about Buhari administration now. It's a, since the advent of this, the Fourth Republic, it's the same, the same thing. You see, we still have that, we have not weaned ourselves from that military um, system. So we're still living in that, you know, time frame, like we were under military regime. That is what is happening in Nigeria. Until we really, you know, inculcate and cultivate the mores and the, I mean, norms of democracy. We have not done that. You see, that's why there's impunity. You can't call somebody. I mean, Dali told you, you cannot wear his costume uniform because he's a soldier. Simple and pure. What, what came out of it? Nothing. But he's a retired soldier. If you know that you cannot wear that, I don't even want to go into it. Why do, you, why do you take the job? It's a big question. But let's see some videos that were taken by random people, by customs service officials, as they were being harassed. Let's take a look at those videos. So Obviously, there was some form of altercation, and someone was trying to stand on their right, and then a bullet goes into the person's body, and the person is shot dead. That video is very old, just so we know. It's, it happened a long time ago, and now the National Assembly is putting it on the table because another one has happened in Ogun State, and the people in that area <coughs> have come to speak up about it. How else can this issue be investigated if the boss doesn't show up at the National Assembly? Are there other routes? Uh, judi uh, um, in the case of the judiciary, can people go to court to, you know, somewhere, some form of, you know, to get an authentication of this? Because right now we're basing this on allegations, claims made by people. If they have proof, can they take it to court? Because it looks like the issue with the Senate, I mean, it's not going to happen anytime soon. As a lawyer, what would you be advising the people in Ogum State and maybe the family of this young man that was shot some time ago? Okay, first of all, uh, for uh, the extrajudicial killing by the Nigerian customs. So the custom is um, a, a type of uh, military setup in Nigeria, and they have um, uh, laid down rules and uh, regulations for, you know, for dealing with uh, errant um, officers and. Just like the the military, they will have like court martial. They will have you know they will have like an, an you know they will have like um, a kind of um, uh, a court martial type of settings where errant uh, officers like that will be dealt with if there are overwhelming evidences against such officers. So, so far, have they been dealt with? And it looks like I don't think so. I don't think so. Be so because right now, the National Assembly is trying to give the customs service the benefit of the doubt to come and defend itself yes. but its boss has refused to show up yes. how can people get some form of justice for the people or the innocent lives that have been lost because somebody's trigger happy mm, so like in nigeria i'm sorry the cheapest thing is life you see but as per investigation it can be investigated i mean it can be investigated without necessarily going this route of um calling um, custom service to the House of Assembly. You see, by calling them to the House of Assembly, the House of Reps, the House of Reps, House of Reps is doing them a favor. You know? They should come and state their own side of the case. That's what, you see, but the simplest things, you know, you turn it into, I mean, I don't know. You see, but like, the family involved and maybe the, the lady in the House of Assembly, they can do some grassroots investigations and bring up a lot of, you can call it circumstantial, whatever, whatever, you know. Evidence. Which can be, you know, pursued in the court of law. I so, always ask myself why on earth it would be okay for 
lives to be lost at the hands of people who are supposed to protect us. We're still dealing with SARS. We're still dealing with policemen killing people um, and trigger happy soldiers also. I mean, and now we have the customs added to that bill. Is this going to end anytime soon? How do we stop all of these things from happening? Because every it could it happens and then it dies down and then another one happens and then we rehash it. Okay. Maybe it could it be that we because we never really deal with the root cause of yes. the problem. That's yes. why it keeps raising like, its ugly head. Yeah. So I, I, so I, I think because there have not been sufficient punishment for offenders. So we've never seen any popular. Um, officer who has committed, you know, an offence, being brought to, being brought to to the fore for everybody to see that, oh, this guy committed this offence, he killed somebody, and now the law has taken it, it, his cause and is perhaps being shot or perhaps is, is taken to prison, is serving life sentences in the prison. You've not seen examples like that. So until we see those evidences, until we see people being punished, until we see customs, you know. Customs coming out, castigating their officers, sanctioning them, even sending them to prison. Once you see those things happen, until you see thorough court martial happening in Nigeria, these problems will, have, will definitely be there. As he was speaking, I was thinking about the fine policemen who were shot by soldiers mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. thought that they were mm -hmm. kidnappers and then let the kidnap kingpin go escape. escape. <laughs> I'm wondering. Has something been done to those officers? Because we heard that they were going to be caught martialed, but I haven't heard anything since then. It probably has been overtaken by events. Uh, that's a that's normal Nigerian style. Like he was saying, to protest him now, you know, like, you see, we need deterrence. Once there's no deterrence, people will keep doing what they're doing, you know? If, I mean, there must be punishment, you know? I mean, it is about perception. I know if I do this, this is going to happen. But how do you punish anyone if these people or the people who had them have refused to come to answer to anybody or anything? How do we deal with that? I mean, quickly, in one second, we need to go. That's where the problem is. See, because I know that the man at the top, the last case scenario, we're going to do a spirit of call. You know? I mean, it's going to be on my side anyway, no matter what I do. But that's another allegation on Mr. President. He probably would never do that. He's no, no I'm, not talking about, I'm not talking about President now. You mean the head, head of, of the... the different agencies or whatever. I mean, I mean, they're going to support themselves now, no matter what. But the police was out on Twitter, hashtagging and asking us uh, to get justice for the officials. But that's a story for another day. I want to say thank you, Jotson, Alari Bibi, political analyst, Noble Abasi, legal practitioner. Thank you, gentlemen, for this conversation. Unfortunately, this ends on a very gloomy note. Uh, thanks for staying with us. We'll take a short break. And when we come back, I'll give you my take. The House of Representatives has said it will probe the appointment of an interim management team for the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC. The House were criticizing the appointment and subsequent inauguration of the team by the Minister of the Niger Delta Affairs, Goswila Kbabio, said the interim committee is alien to the NDDC Act and should be dissolved. The motion was raised by Nicholas Osai from Delta State as a matter of urgent national importance and wants recently screened NDDC board nominees to be allowed to resume their duties. Man, interim management committee is stunning and suspicious. Acknowledge, Mr. Speaker, distinguished honorable colleagues, the fact that in practice, any existing vacancies in the office of the managing director of NDDC is usually filled temporarily by the highest directors in the order of seniority and rank. Suffice, Mr. Speaker, distinguished honorable colleagues, to say, by the confirmation of NDDC governing board, member, by the Senate, the three-man interim management committee of the NDDC recently set up by the Minister of Niger Data Affairs becomes vitiated, null, and void of no legal effect. Resolve, Mr. Speaker, distinguished honorable colleagues, to urge the ministers of the Niger Data Affairs to withdraw the appointment and the activities of the three-man interim management committee that is unknown to NDDC Act. It's time for my take. Experience, they say, is the best teacher, but that statement can only be validated if people allow themselves to learn from 
these mistakes that could, you know, help build their experience. But in the case of the APC, they seem not to have learned anything from the past mistakes of March 2019 elections, as they have found themselves in yet another pot of hot water. And they risk having no representation at this weekend's election. Again, it's a few days to elections in Bielsa State, and it seems to be a free-for-all. Haven't we learned anything? And this free-for-all is on both sides. The APC and the PDP gone shot at a party's campaign. How long can this cycle continue? Dear Nigerians, stop killing one another for a selfish politician. Is the blood of your brother was that politician's ambition? Let's make the right choices. I am Mary Anacle, and it's been Plus Politics.